Kim, I am so pumped to have you on. Um, Me too. I just feel like, what have I been missing out on? Like, why have I not met you earlier? <laughs> same, same. And then hearing that song has me like pumped up. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Perfect. Okay. So um, people might know you, people might not. So just, just kind of share your story from the beginning, like how you found it works. And then I'll just kind of ask you some questions after that. Okay, cool. So hi guys, I am Kim Kane and I am a triple diamond. I have been with It Works for almost five years now. And that song she was just playing describes my journey with It Works. So, um, was I muted that whole time? Oh, it said I was unmuted by the host. I'm like, uh oh, I think I was muted that whole time. Okay, so I've been in for almost five years. And I got started in this business by accident. Like it was seriously an accident. So I showed up to, um, how many of you have been to a one team, one mission or like a try it? Okay, cool. So my friend Zach asked me to come to his hotel cause I had just had my baby Eric and he was visiting from Florida. He was like, Hey, come here. We'll get dinner. I, I want to see you. He was my, he was my best friend. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'll meet you there. Sounds good. I was wearing a Duck Dynasty hoodie, and I don't even like Duck Dynasty. I had my hair, because I used to have hair, so it looked crazy. I had a one-month-old kid in a car seat. I was carrying him through the hotel, and he was like, psych, just kidding. Come in here. I want to introduce you to a couple people, and I'm like, Zach, what? Like, I had told him no to It Works for six consecutive months. So he pulled me into this one team, one mission, and I was standing there with my brand new baby, and this girl gets on stage and she literally said, I ignored every part of the one team, one mission, every single bit of it. Cause I didn't care about it. I was not interested. Um, and I had a, a kid that was like crying and just being crazy. So finally this girl gets on stage and said, so anyway, yeah, now I'm making $2,000 a month from my phone. And I'm like, what, <laughs> wait a minute. Did you just, are you serious? Um, so a little background is that I worked 60 hours a week at a factory job that I hated prior to it works. Um, I had no faith. So my life sucked. I was not a happy person. I was very negative. And then I had this one month old baby to throw into the mix and an eviction notice all at the same time. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. This is life. Like, this is awesome. And then I come to this one team, one mission event and this girl, I mean, it literally took it. That's all it took was that person on stage saying, I make $2,000 a month for my cell phone now because they were recognizing diamonds. And I'm like, what? Are you serious? And I, I used to be 100% atheist and they kept talking about God and I still joined. I still said yes to this faith-based business. Um, so that was God. I always say, I appreciate you for believing in me, even though I didn't believe in you because there is literally like every single reason I had every single reason to say no, but I still said yes that night. And I, I should have said no over and over and over again, but I still said yes. Even though I was broke, I had um, $200 to my name because I had just received my first short-term disability paycheck that day. So that is God. Um, and I was on short-term disability because I was pregnant and I had a horrible pregnancy. So I was taken off of work. And so um, I said yes that night and I joined and I had never tried the products. I'd never, I didn't know anything about the business. I went home and I kind of word vomited all over my seven year boyfriend. Um, now Joe, and I was like, I just joined it works. I have no idea what it means. I don't know what it is, but let me tell you, we gotta, we gotta like life has to change. Cause this is not, I didn't sign up for this. Um, and so within five months of my business, I hit diamond and I did what that girl said. And I was like, all right, I fired my boss. I walked into the dude. He didn't even know my first name. So I went ahead and let him go <laughs> so that I could go home and raise my baby. And now I have two. Um, and so now I'm triple diamond. I've obviously, you know, more than replaced two full time incomes and Joe's home temporarily right now because he wants to be our kids started school. So I'm like, just take quit the job that you hate. Let's just live life on our terms for a little bit. And now I raise both of my kids, Eric and Lucy full time. And I found God because of this company. So I love, I love, love what I do. Oh my God. I just love you so much. Okay. I just love you. <laughs> um, so kind of walk us through, um, you know, you joined. Okay. Mm -hmm. You were like, probably after I had somewhat of like buyer's remorse, right? You were like, these people <laughs> talking about God, like, I don't even know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, I just am trying to make some extra money. Like, mm -hmm. what were your next steps after that? Like immediately getting going um, from that point. 
So I love that I actually remember this because most people like five years into the business, they're like, I really don't know what it was. I can tell you specifically what it was that, um, that catapulted me. I mean, I went Ruby within my first, you guys, I barely graduated high school. Like I only graduated high school a year and a half late because my sister completed my last online course. Like I should not have been a high school graduate. And I, my mom forced me to walk the stage. She bought me my outfit. I was like, this is stupid. I never went to prom. I didn't have any friends. Um, and so I was someone that people didn't expect much from, you know, they didn't expect much from me. So when I had moved to Grand Rapids away from all eight of my siblings, and my mom, they were like, okay, bye, like, good luck with life, because you're making the wrong move, like, you're not going to make it by yourself out there with, you know, Joe, and so I remember joining, and I'm like, what am I even thinking, and again, the only thing I can think of is that, is God, like, he, he literally guided me um, through this journey, even from the beginning, and I think it's because I just knew what I wanted, you guys, I knew that I wanted to stop living the life that I was living. So I grew up with eight siblings. Um, all of them came from my mom. People always ask me, so are they step? Are they adopted? No, they're all like biological <laughs> siblings. We grew up like eating SpaghettiOs uh, for weeks on end. Like mac and cheese was our, was our, was bay. Like we always had mac and cheese in the house because we were poor. We were poor. I've lived in more houses. I've lived in homeless shelters with my mom and my siblings. I have lived in trailer parks. Like we grew up struggling and my mindset was struggle. So when I grew up and I had my first kid at 21 or two, I can't even remember. Um, I remember thinking, cool, I'm doing exactly what I said I wasn't going to do. So when I joined It Works, I knew in my heart, like, I just want to make an extra $500 a month. It'd be cool if I could do what that lady did on stage with two grand, but if I could just make an extra 500, I would be so, so excited to maybe quit the factory job and get a little part-time job, you know? And so that was my goal in the beginning. But when I got started, now I want you guys to know I had no network. Like I literally had 300 friends on Facebook and they weren't even real friends. They were like high school acquaintances that I hardly knew anymore. But I was so excited. I was so excited for this opportunity that when I say my excitement took me Ruby and then Diamond, that people always ask me, so what'd you do? What was the trick? I was just excited and I had no shame. I already had no friends. So I dare you to tell me that you don't like me. Like, I don't care. I didn't have any friends. You can't, whatever. So I went through all 300 friends on my Facebook within the first like couple of weeks, asked all of them, Hey, have you heard of like, listen, I did the wrong things and I still went diamond. I said, Hey, have you heard of that crazy rap thing? That's it. I didn't say, hi, how are you? Like your profile picture is beautiful. Your eyelashes are on fleek. Nothing. I just said, Hey, have you tried that crazy rap thing? That's not how you message people. And I still went diamond. It was just my excitement. So like, I got people on the phone. I met up with them for coffee. I ran out of gas on the way to some coffee places. Like I just did what I needed to do because I saw the bigger picture right away. And so I was excited. I was willing to reach out to anyone. I was willing to go the extra mile literally in my car and meet them for coffee if I needed to and tell them more about the business. Um, and then the other thing that I did really consistently was I blitzed people and I booked parties from those blitzes because I had no network. So I would blitz people um, at the store, you know, people that I connected with in public. Uh, and then I would get them on Facebook and then I would ask them to have a party. And that grew my network so much that I started to enroll people that I didn't know. So um, I love, I love this. So when you were like blitzing people, like give me an example. Like, okay. Uh, like one of your like craziest blitzes, even if you didn't execute. Okay. So in the beginning, like I don't tell my, I mean, I tell my team this, but I don't advise you guys to do this. I'll give you a good blitzing tip in a second, but I, and this just goes to show that you fail. It's okay to fail. Like it's fine. That's what, that's how you grow. And that is, if you're willing to fail forward, you will be triple presidential ambassador of black diamond, just like period. Um, it's when you think that you're going to be perfect throughout this entire journey. You're not, I promise. So I would literally take, I mean, I would take a, I still do. I have blitz cards. So I would take our blitz card and I would literally with Eric in the shopping cart, walk up to a random lady, which go ahead. I still do it, but it's just different. I would walk up to a random lady. I was sweating the first time and I'm not a nervous person. I'm not, I'm not someone who cares what people think, but I was so nervous to just randomly this girl looking at broccoli. I was just like, Hey, can I give you a coupon? Can I just, <sighs> sweaty palms can I give you a coupon and she was like 
yeah. I'm like, have you heard of it works before? And she was like, no. And I'm like, well, this is what it is. And this is what it does. And okay, have a nice day. Bye. And then I kept, I kept doing that, but better. I got better and I got better at my execution, I guess. And I would then add people on Facebook. So what I was doing wrong in the beginning is that I was just walking away after the blitz. I started to actually get their phone numbers, get their Facebook. And now my blitzes look completely different. I'm a much more confident, <clears throat> confident person in myself, in Christ, and in my business. So I can literally approach someone differently now, but it looks like the person who serves you food at a restaurant or the bartender across the way that you've had a conversation with. Like it, my blitzes look different and more personal now, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. So um, when you go up to somebody, like, how do you start the conversation? Like, typically, like, is I mean, obviously, it's a little bit different every time. But like, is it with a compliment? Or is it like, what what does it kind of look like? Just because I know most of us are on social media and do it through social media. Um, and I feel like we there is like a huge network out there of people who aren't on social media all the time, maybe. Um, and that haven't heard of it. Yep. yep. So what does that kind of look like? If you're giving us like two minutes blitzing top tips, go. Yeah. Okay. Two minutes. Okay. First of all, I work from Facebook mostly. So just know that like, that's a thing you can do both. My goal is to blitz them and get them on social media so they can stalk my life and be like, she is like really cool. And then they want to be a part of my life every day. So like a blitz for me now is example. I, I'm allowed. Y'all can tell I don't mind speaking to people. So have your mouth open because if your mouth is closed, so is your business. Promise you stop being ashamed of what you do. Like we are walking, talking billboards for it works. Okay. We're paid to tell people what this is. Can you just be genuine about it though? Can you just be personal? If you can, boom, you do, you got it. So a really great example is I go to the library. I go to Eric's school. I go to, um, the doctor's office. If a person is sitting next to me or even like kind of next to me, I will say, girl, your shoes are the, f like, I know it sounds cheesy. I know it sounds made up, but I will compliment them on something. Or I will say, dude, your kid is so cute. Like how old is she? And she'll say two. And I'm like, she's, you know, she just turned three. That's so cool. And then we'll have like a back and forth for even one minute. And then I'll go, you know what? Are you on Facebook? Cause I want to connect there. Is that cool? And they're like, yeah, that's totally fine. Because I've been kind. Because I've given, like, we've had a little conversation. We are in 2018. It's not weird to ask someone if they're on Facebook. Um, it's actually more weird to be like, do you have a phone number so we can text? At, that's weirder to people. They're like, what? So I just say, are you on Facebook? Like, we should stay connected. I'm always trying to make friends in the Grand Rapids area. So we should stay connected. And they're like, okay. So do that. You know, I just had someone message me today and say, hey, I was interested in the keto coffee and the greens. I think our son is in the same class as each other. I was going to approach you and got too nervous. And I'm like, what? Like, why are you afraid to talk to people? We have, we're in the same, we see each other. Like, what are you talking about? And so just approach people. It's not weird. It's kind and the world needs more kindness. So just do it. Yes. I love it. I love it. Okay. So I know when we were talking at Morgan's wedding, um, you had said that like you primarily first built on like from face to face, like online parties or not online, but from parties. And then you've like more so now do online. Um, mm -hmm. obviously like you said with both, like, it's not like you have to pick one or the other. Like you said, you can do both, but yeah. What was that like transition like? And I guess like, what are your biggest social media tips? Because what I love about you, like, when we were talking, you were like, I don't look like you guys. Like, <laughs> um, but what I like about you is that like, you just do your own thing. So like, how would you, like when you're training people, like when you're coaching people on social media and you're just like, be authentic, be yourself, like, all those tips. Um, what are some like practical things that we could just try to do to take away to be more authentic on social media? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I do love social media. And you guys like I'm wearing a Hanes. This is not Joe's t-shirt. This is mine. It's a Hanes gray t-shirt. I'm not wearing a bra. I just got out of the shower. My hair is not done. Like who cares? Just be you. Like God made you, you, you don't have to be anybody else. So like, I love Kelsey Thornton's entire personality. But if you see us side by side, you're like, they're not friends. Like I posted that video today and I'm sure people are like, that's your friend, Kim quit playing. Like, 
but you don't have to be like, you don't have to worry about what people think. You just need to be yourself and you will attract the right people. So when I look at my memories on Facebook, um, I'm like, wow, I used to post that way. That's gross. That's ugh, how did people like want to know me? But now I've developed, you know, I've learned from top leaders. I've learned from watching other people, but I've gone, yes, from party, like in home parties mostly to, I'm like, all right, let's rock this social media thing. Like let's get on Facebook and see how it goes. So my biggest social media tips, and I'm sure you guys have heard them. I mean, Kelsey's your upline, but like, I love, um, yes, be yourself always. And especially on social media. Like people can tell when you're trying to be a Kelsey. I can't tr pretend to be Kelsey. Like people would know that they'd be like, that's, you're not authentic. I can tell. So, um, be you. So like my top, my top Facebook tips, cause I mostly work from Facebook is post like three times a day, three to four times a day. I've noticed that that really is, um, that's enough. That's enough. I have team that does it six or seven and they're like, I'm not getting any likes. I'm like, dude, you post back to back and nobody like, it's getting lost. So, and post like crisp pictures of you doing the damn thing, whether it's you on your <laughs> pretending to work on your phone by a tree at a wedding, um, or like pictures of you, like people love selfies. They love to see you. I don't know. They just love to see you be you. I love doing live videos. Um, I don't do them as consistently at, wait, consistently as I was, but I do do them like today I did one and it doesn't have to be, I will be in a shirt that says awesome with like a finger pointing up, like lame, just lame with my hair looking crazy and talking about how girl, like you can watch my latest live video, but do live videos and like 10 minute, just 10 minute live videos about a subject that you're passionate about, whether that's, um, anything you guys I love makeup so I'll do them on makeup I'll do them on just being a better you I'll talk about the sermon that I went to on a Sunday like I will literally go live for just 10 minutes about something um, that gets people really getting to know you and then if you aren't posting to your story every single day that has changed my business like I get to see who sees my story like that is huge so I will post on Instagram and then I have it connected to my Facebook so Post on your story every day. Let people into your life a little bit. Like people really get to know you on your stories because you don't have to worry about how many times you do that a day. You can do that as much as you want. And always have a couple of poll options, like one for the business, one for the products. And I've noticed that the more consistent I've been on that daily, um, the more people are actually taking my polls and like coming to me about this. So that's been huge. But when they talk about attraction marketing or branding yourself, like I'm not the expert on that, but I have gotten it down myself. Like people know Kim loves Jesus, loves her babies, loves Panera, loves Will Ferrell more than anything. Um, loves, loves, loves her, her, it works business. People know that about me. You don't have to, um, scroll through and go, wow, she's really salesy. Like she's really, really, really salesy and repetitive. And all she talks about is it works. People join you for you. People are like, you know what? You just seem happy. You seem confident. You seem like your life is just, your life seems fun. I want to be more like that. I want this to be more of my life. And so invite people onto a journey that, that you'd want to be a part of. Like if you can go to your own Facebook wall and, and look at it and go, Oh, this isn't really that attractive. I don't think people are scrolling through here going, yes, yes, yes. Then change it up a little bit. Do a post every day about something inspiring. Do a post every day about your kids. If you have them, um, make, I don't know. I've been posting a lot about Eric going back to, or going to school for the first time and how much I get to stay home with him and pick him up every day and drop him off every day. And life posts have been really, really big. Like people follow life posts because every day someone new connects with that. And it could be, you know, you could post a life post on Monday and that person sees it. But then on Friday when they're paid and they're ready, they see your life post again. And they're like, okay, all right, well you keep, dang it, you're consistent. All right, let's just try. Let's just do this. And so, and then remember that posting is not messaging. So yep. Share to your story. Yep. Post on Facebook three to four times a day. Um, make sure that you're being authentic. If, if it doesn't, if it feels like you're posting just to post, just don't, don't do it. Um, but then remember that all of that is not asking people. So I will go see who watched my story and I'll message all of them and say, Hey girl, thanks for, you know, I don't know, something, think of something. I see that you saw my story. Um, have you tried the shake before? Or I'll just start a genuine conversation. There is nothing like 
networking, like be, be personal. So I'll message everybody who looks at my story. I'll message everybody who has liked or commented on my selfie. I don't care if it's just me. I'll go make a conversation. They're, they're watching you. Um, they like you for a reason. They liked your post. So don't be afraid. That's where pe most people on my team anyway. Um, and I'm sure on it works or in it works in general uh, kind of stumble is that they are like, I'm posting, I'm doing all that. Well, how many people have you asked though? Because if you haven't asked anybody, like, duh, <laughs> you're not, I mean, that's why you're not Ruby yet is because you just haven't made the ask. So make an ask out of yourself and be, o be okay with kind of getting out of your comfort zone because that's where the growth really happens. Yeah, I love that. Make an ask out of yourself. <laughs> yes, make an ask out of yourself. <laughs> um, okay, so tell us, like, what, um, what has been your biggest failure in the business? Cause we're, I'm like definitely the type of leader where I just don't, I don't want to just like talk about like the cool things. Cause that, I mean, that's cool, but we see so much of that every day and it's so inspirational to hear that stuff. But I want, I want people to feel not alone. Yeah. Um, and so kind of tell us about your biggest failure in the business and what you learned from it. I, love that I don't have to think about many of your questions like I know my biggest I know my biggest failure and that's um I'm okay with admitting it like I know what I've done wrong and what I need to be better at and my biggest failing moment was I have eight siblings and my favorite sister is Harley she is my best friend I was her maid of honor in her wedding in June like she is everything to me like that is my girl I love her and she joined, she was the first distributor on my team in 2013. She joined my team. She was like, you joined It Works? I heard about it first. I'm like, well, now you got to be under me. Ha, 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 ha. Okay. So she joined my team and I was so excited. I'm like, dude, we are going to take over the actual world. And um, I went diamond in five months. She went emerald in five months. I was a selfish person when I joined this business. I was so freaking selfish. I did not care about the people on my team that were promoting. I just wanted that $10,000 bonus. I just wanted diamond. Me, 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 me. Like even my own sister felt that. And that is, she quit as soon as she went Emerald because I was not, I didn't buy her an Emerald gift. Not that that's like why she quit. I didn't buy her an Emerald gift. I didn't show her any love. I let my upline do that. And I didn't, um, I didn't appreciate the hard work that she also put into it. And as we were sitting at Smoky Bones, promoting literally at Smoky Bones, I was just so focused on my diamond. I didn't even like, I forgot that she went Emerald. I forgot that anybody else on my team helped. I was so focused on my, just me. And it was after like, she quit. She has not been back since. Like I always say to her, I'm like, when are you going to rejoin me? I promise you I'm a better person. Like I swear to you, I'm a better leader. And I'm like, oh, Harley for real. Like, can you please, can you please give this another chance? But that's on her time, not mine. And so she quit on me and the entire pretty much team, I mean, just kind of went away and I'm like, Oh dear Lord. And I, I didn't know what to do. And I was so sad and I could have easily been like, well, deuces, like that was fun while it lasted. But I had a, like a, um, aha moment. I'm like, dude, you have to be willing to help other people. And you really have to put other people's goals first. Like the girl under me that went Ruby, that was going to pay for her groceries that month. That's a big freaking deal. That's why did you just discard that? Like care for people and stop making it about you. Cause you will go all the way if you just care about other people. And, um, obviously like my journey, it's been almost five years. So I've gone through a lot of growth. And so that is not an issue for me anymore. I genuinely like my, why is my team. I want to see the girls, like one of them is about to have a baby literally any, any day now. And I'm like, chick, we've got to get you to diamond. Like you deserve what, cause that's her goal. I'm like, you deserve that. Let's run. I'm willing to run with you because I want to see you genuinely. I want to see you stay home with that kid. And I know what that feels like. So you have to be willing to put other people's goals before yours as hard as it may sound. But I mean, having my best friend and runner who legitimately promoted to Emerald. Like it wasn't just, it wasn't me, it was her. And um, having her quit and seeing why broke my heart. And it still does, but like, it's something that, I mean, I learned from it. It was a learning, had to be my sister, unfortunately, but it was a learning lesson. Yeah. 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 No, thanks for sharing that with us. Okay. Mm -hmm. What are you learning right now in the business? Oh my gosh. Uh, mindset. I've learned right now in the business, like even at the wedding, you kept talking about personal growth and I would have 
even two years ago, I would have been like, anyway, like, okay, can we just <laughs> message people? Like, who cares about the book you're reading? I, I am queen of like, people come to me on my team and they're like, blah, blah, blah. Are you doing your personal development? Well, there's your problem. Like, bye, do your personal growth and then talk to me. <laughs> but, um, or, or go to church or do something with your life. Cause like quit being negative, but you have to, it's all mindset. I just got off of a zoom, um, with Pam cause uh, like my upline had it and all she talked about was mindset. And I was like, reach. I mean, what you tell yourself, I just posted on a status, um, right now, like 30 minutes ago, I said, because you know, that slim shady song, like I am whatever you say I am. If I wasn't, then why? Okay. I am whatever I say I am. If I wasn't, then why would I say I am? So I posted that because mindset is everything. Like what you you tell, (laughs) Please stand up. <laughs> I put hashtag Kim Sh- Kim Shady, so like not a big deal. But I, <laughs> that was clever. But I I realized more than anything in this past year that what you tell yourself becomes true. Like write down the amount of money you want to make every month for real. Write out your most perfect day. Like get a notebook, a fancy cute notebook, and take a pen and write out. Like if it has to be three pages, whatever, write out your most perfect day. I'll never forget Joe found mine. I did it for the first time like three years ago and I was so embarrassed. He found my most perfect day. I was like talking to myself and he was like, what is this? I'm like, it's, it's our most perfect day. Just (laughs) let me get to work and one day we'll have it. But you need to write down your most perfect day. And now that looks different for me. So I redid it. And um, reading that and really going to bed thinking about that, that's what I wake up every day on fire for this business, even five years in, because I know what I want. I know why I want it. And I know what's going to stop me. So I don't let it. Um, And so you have to be willing to fill your own head space with good stuff and good people. Like I used to surround myself with nobody, but then I started to surround myself with like negative people and people that wanted to complain all the time. And once I started to weed that out and just, you know, your top five is who you are, um, that changed my business. So like, just like going to a Sunday sermon, you're like, Oh my gosh, everything is glorious and beautiful. And you leave church feeling on fire. It's the same when you dig into a really good book or a great YouTube video or a Pam Souter zoom, like you have to fill your head with all good things. Like it is 80% mindset and 20% skill. So you don't have to be the best at everything. You just have to know exactly what you're capable and worthy of and that, you know, you can do it and fill it. Yeah. Do something every day for yourself. Yeah. I love that. So what are you reading right now? (sighs) Millionaire money. Hold on. I'm listening to the audio. I, I do read and I forget it's a long title. I do read, but I love getting in my car and actually listening to stuff while I'm driving instead of like music like I used to. So Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. And it just okay. talks about like my favorite, one of my all time favorite books. Like it literally changed my life. Yeah, that's what everybody said. So I'm like, okay, fine. And I just started it. So, okay, fine. I'll get it. But I just started it. And um, it's so good. Like even Pam was just talking about it on the uh on the zoom and I'm, it's just what you tell yourself it's, it's huge. And then I've read, um, one of my favorites is I know it's, it's probably some people are like, that's so simple, but Eric worry, I've listened to it since I got started and it's an audio that you can buy Eric worry, um, seven steps to becoming a network marketing professional. And I remember buying that in my beginning of my business, putting it in my car and listening to it. And I've listened to it probably 10 times. And every time I listen to it, I get a different, like it's different and I'm somewhere different in my business. So it applies differently. Yeah. I love that. Okay. So what do you feel like, um, makes you keep the spark? Because I think, um, you know, like we just kind of, you kind of touched on it about like your mindset and re like reevaluating your why, like you feels like you've already talked about doing that, but what would you say to somebody who just kind of feels stuck? Like maybe they haven't hit diamond. Maybe they don't know what's possible. Maybe they just feel like, you know what? Like it's fine. You know, like maybe they don't have the financial necessarily the need. Um, but really feeling like they just don't know if this is something that like they're obsessed with yet. Um, and I feel like, you know, for me, I didn't know how obsessed I was about it until like I went diamond. Yeah. Because I got to see, I was helping so many other people at that point. Like 
and I got to see it pay off for so many other people and for myself too. But, um, it became much more real at that point, but like to people who haven't necessarily hit that yet, what do you feel like, like, what do you, would you say to somebody on your team that came to you and was just like, I don't know, like, why don't I just have that fire? I just had someone do that yesterday and I'm like, bro, I can't want it for you. Like, I can't, you have to want it yourself. So like, I encourage you. And I told her, I encourage you to figure out why you're putting a cap on yourself. Like what to me, like I'll explain to you, I guess this will kind of help you guys better, but I've been in for almost, like I've said five years. Okay. How do you keep wanting more from this business five years in? How do you like, how does that a thing? And it's because my kids, I literally can't imagine and if you don't have kids, then think of something else. But like, I literally cannot imagine leaving them to go to a job like I used to. I used to work 3.30 in the morning to like 3.30 p.m. And when I think about getting up to go to a job that I hate to make less money, to never see my kids, I'm like, oh, uh-uh, nope, I'll do whatever it takes. And when you have gone through what I've been through in this business, it's hard to quit on yourself. Like I have literally made the best friends. If you're not plugging in, you're not going to want it as bad. I promise you that when people say, how are you triple diamond? Because I've plugged in for five years. Like I have not one month. I have not skipped one month. I've either gone to an OTOM. I've been on zooms every month. If you invite me to Courtney, Courtney King is my ambassador upline. And we're like best friends. If, if she says, Hey, I'm having a pizza party. Um, next Tuesday, invite your team. Girl, I'm there. I don't care if I had plans. I'm going to cancel them. It is so important to be plugged in and filled up by other people that know exactly what your goals are and are pushing you and are holding you accountable and want the same things. Like I have always plugged in, even in the moments where I'm like, why am I at Diamond for two years? What is even going on? I still pursued. And that's because Anyway, I've gone through a lot in this business. Like when you want something so badly and you know that the only thing that can do it is something like this, I can't make, I, I, my goal, my, my number is 20,000. I cannot make $20,000 a month at the factory or at the gas station or at rallies, the fast food place where I was working. I can't, I can't and be as happy as I am and help other people live their best lives and be home with my kid. No, it's not a thing. Like you have to fall in love with this business yourself. And the only way you do that is by plugging in. That's it. Like I have literally still, still, still to this day, I show up with new team at every event, new team. Like I don't care who quits. I don't care who quits. I'm not quitting. Like I am worth this opportunity and I have, okay. So like this might not apply to you. Maybe it does. And maybe I sound like a broken record, but when you have literally grown in your faith because of this business, I, I couldn't even imagine leaving this. I, I can't imagine being like, well, forget about it. Like figure out what you want and why you want it and really, really, really dig deep to your core. Like, I don't know. That's what I have to do. And when I go and I want to talk to like, I want to talk to like the Kim like five years ago though. The Kim oh, who was God. atheist. The Kim who was atheist? Is that the what you Kim said? who was like, no, I don't believe in nothing. Yeah. Like, like what, what was it hmm. that, that happened? Like, what, did he just keep pursuing you? Like, was it just like instances that kept occurring and you were like, this ain't coincidence. <laughs> like, what was like kind of that journey like for you? What, finding God or? Yeah finding God. Yeah. So that's why when people ask certain questions, I'm like, I can't really explain it to you other than like, it was all him. Like I had every reason not to do this business. So for me, I, I'll remember, um, that's why that song resonates with me so much. Like I, I, my journey is, is weird, but I'm obsessed with it. So, um, I remember driving home. I remember driving home from an event because I'm not kidding. Like at the OTOM, they kept saying, you know, God is so good and God puts it. And I'm like, God, okay. Okay. Like we get it. I just want to make money. Okay. I don't care. And it was so off putting to me. It was like, so how you had never been to church. No, I don't No. Like before this, like five years, like you had never been to church. No, no. You had My never mom, said, like, you had never talked about like Jesus other than kind of like making fun of people. 
Right. I, we didn't, my family, um, no. So like my mom, we never went to church. She, she tells me she believes in God. And I'm like, I would have never known that. Like I would have, okay. <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, and then my dad passed away when I was, um, 11 and he was a man of Christ. He was everything that you'd want in a, in a, he was awesome, but I hadn't seen my dad since I was nine. So like, I didn't know that. I didn't know that part of him that well because I was so young. Um, and he was the type of guy who would listen to Ludacris and then, <laughs> like, and then Christian worship music. What's like, your fantasy? Jesus, he <laughs> lived her name on high. <laughs> yup, he would. He'd listen to Kirk Franklin and then he would listen to Ludacris. And I'm like, well, okay. And so I didn't grow up in a faith. There was no faith in my home. There was no faith in my life. Like, I didn't have friends. I didn't have other family. Um, my family is very like close knit and small. We don't have cousins and aunts and uncles. We don't have any of that. So, um, growing up, I remember, yeah, God, I didn't have any. And then when my dad died, I wrote him off completely, like 100%. And I didn't even mean to do that. And I just, I did like, there was no God. And then I would, um, yeah, people always said like, if you walked into a church, you'd, you'd burst into flames. And, um, at one point, I mean, I was like hardcore. Everybody knew Kim as an atheist and just a negative, horrible person. And I, um, I wanted upside down crosses like tattooed on my feet and thank God I never did that. But when I joined this business, um, I remember them talking about it. So you can imagine how like weird that was. And I still said, yes, who does like, who does that? And I still said yes. And I remember leaving a training that my upline was having. And, uh, I remember driving home and it was dark and I was in my car and I was on my way home to uh, Grand Rapids. So it was about an hour drive. And like a ton of bricks, I just started like bawling and realized that I started talking, like I started talking to God and I'm like, what am I even doing? <laughs> and since what is even happening? Like, and I, I remember saying like, God, if you're real, like speak up or forever hold that freaking peace. Cause like, I'm, this is me being vulnerable in my dark car. Okay. And ever since then I, I called my sister, you guys, like I called my sister who is 11 years older than me. And I was like, tell me more about this dude. Like just real quick in like a couple sentences, who is God? I don't understand. Like, what do you think of him? What, what's your outtake? Like what is going on? And it was like, I was coming out of a Christian closet. I mean, I was so embarrassed. I was so embarrassed of what people would think of me because I've never been someone who says words like, Oh, I'm blessed or God is good. Like I don't talk about him. And so I was so embarrassed and worried about what people would think of me. And sudden like even joe my boyfriend joe still isn't really i mean he goes to church with me sometimes but nothing i mean i'm waiting for him to have his moment where it's like okay yes he is real um but i have no shame in him and and watching the growth so that was like four and a half years ago and watching what he's done in my life consistently is like you don't even have time like you don't even have the time you won't believe half the things i say but having faith in the unknown and what you cannot see like that is real and um I just remember having that moment in my car when it was dark and then I, I called my sister she told me a little bit more about why she believes and who Jesus Christ and I didn't know anything about like the father son and holy spirit I'm like what does that even mean um and so I just started growing and then about a year and a half ago I decided to go to church and the lady at Meyer stop me. I was at a mire that I've never been at and I've never gone back to. I was on my way home from a rap party. I was buying deodorant. Her daughter, her daughter stopped me when I was looking at deodorant and she said, I like your phone case. And she was 13. And I was like, huh? And it said, um, what did it used to say? It said, um, it was, a, it was a scripture. I don't even remember what it said. Oh, pray, pray more, worry less. And I was like, thank you. Like you're so young. How do you, you like my phone case and you're 13. I wouldn't have even cared about this when I was 13. And so I was like, thank you. And her mom said, do you go to church? And I'm like, no, but that's funny that you asked that because I've actually been really trying to commit to going to a church, but I'm afraid of walking into a church and being discouraged and being judged and then not wanting to ever go back. And she was like, no, not, you should come to my church. And I'm like, okay. Um, it took me a month and she was following up with me every weekend. Hey, I'll save you a seat. It's Sunday. Will I see you here? And I'm like, no, I'm busy. Like I kept putting it off and I kept like, I, like I was putting God off. I was like, no, I'm good. I'm good. I just, I have stuff to do. Finally, I showed up and I've never seen her ever since. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. So that was, that was an angel. 
And I remember walking into the church and I've never felt so welcomed in my life. And so now I volunteer there and I've gone to church for over a year and a half. And that changed everything. I, I got into a Bible study where I could ask as many questions as I wanted to. So even though I had found God, I really, a year and a half ago is when I started to really like explore him and really get to know him. And he has, I mean, the first sermon had me, my makeup, I shouldn't even done my makeup. I'm like, oh, okay, this was a bad idea. Like I grabbed my two kids. I walked out early because I was bawling. Um, I was supposed to be there and he was waiting for me to give him that, that moment and that time of day. So now like church has changed everything. The Bible study has changed everything, but giving him all of it, like I've never been so worry-free. I've never been so, I'm less anxious now. Like my sister just posted something and said, my life sucks, but don't like, she was talking to me and she said, we were commenting. She said, my life sucks, but I'm getting a new job. So hopefully the money will fix it. And I said, God, do you even like <laughs> turn to him first? Like he will fix it. Money isn't going to do anything. It, it's him. So, and like, I'm, my family still is like, did that even really just come out of your mouth? Like, did you really just say that? But I, I love my life with him in it so much more than, than not. So it's been, it's been a weird journey. Like there's more, but it's been a really cool, really cool journey. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing. I know some of that's like kind of personal, but like, I know I'm like, it. I'm like, I won't go on too long. Cause no, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I, can listen. I feel like I'm watching a movie. Um, it's Aww. so good. And you're <laughs> such like an awesome, like story, like I, it's your story, but like, you're so good at that. Like you're so engaging. Thanks. Um, awesome. so I love it. Thank you. Um, okay. So you earlier had kind of mentioned like you've been through like a lot in this business. Mm -hmm. Um, are you talking about like people leaving? Are you talking about like just your life has gone through a lot? Like what, what is that? Like, what are you kind of alluding to? Cause sometimes it's funny, right? Cause people think, Oh, you're triple diamonds. Like you had it so easy. You just sit there and you just sit on top of this pile of cash and just sit back and chill and like work from your phone and you have all this time to work from your phone and, and like your life is just made like if I could just have your life then I would be set right so yeah. kind of tell us what you've been through on your journey yep 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 and it's so funny because people will say to me well I'm not you I can't do this business because I'm not how do you think I got me I had to grow this this is like the Kim version you see today is not the Kim version you saw in 2013 baby girl like there's a lot of growth up in here. Impossible. <laughs> yes, Kim Possible and Ron Stoppable. Like, I, I worked hard to get where I'm at. And I promise you, there's someone busier out there, busier than you, killing it at this business. So just stop. I'm horrible with excuses. Like, my upline has to say, Kim, 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 Kim. And I'm like, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I hate excuses because you, yes, I've gone through, oh my God. So when I started this business, I was being evicted. I cannot tell you how many times I've had to <laughs> call consumers energy and be like, please don't turn me off. Like pretty, please don't turn me off. And then they do. And then I'm having to get assistance. And like, so in the five months that I was trying to go diamond, my life was a struggle bus. Like it was, I was working still 50 to 60 hours a week, raising a month old baby, going getting evicted like I got evicted it works did not find me soon enough um and I kept pursuing like I kept pursuing because I knew okay at the end of this tunnel dude at the end of this tunnel like I know it's gonna be all right I went diamond I stayed at diamond for two years the struggle was real okay because on average diamonds make two grand a month but I was making like a thousand ish and we were I mean at some point some sometimes I was making the two grand sometimes it was a, a grand and we were struggling. I remember telling my son no to yogurt and I cried my eyes out. I cried so hard in the store. I will never forget that. And I could cry now. I remember him begging me for yogurt, like, please. And I'm like, Bubbies, like, please, I'm, I'm balling. I need you to hear me. I can't, I can't buy you yogurt. Like, I am so sorry. Um, I'm so sorry. Like I can't. And it broke my heart and I still went home and I still messaged people because damn it, I'm not saying no to yogurt ever again. Like I could cry. You, you guys, you have to know that this business will change your life if you let it, if you put the excuses in the fucking background. Like I don't care what you're going through. We've all been through it. Life happens. How are you going to react to it? I could just been like, you know what? 
factory, you still got a job opening, making eleven dollars an hour. Okay, I'll see you soon. And woke up and left Eric with the babysitter at three thirty. But he was worth fighting for. Lucy, when she was born, she was worth fighting for. I remember being pregnant with her, and it was a much less stressful pregnancy because I did have it works and I was working and I was making decent money. But you go through it, and it does, like everyone goes through it. Like just get past it. Like God has plans for you. Just you just have to be willing to stay on that right path and like not let the distractions get a hold of you. Because I could have easily let the distractions, and sometimes I did. I'm not perfect, um, but you just have to be willing to make your non-negotiables every single day and and go for it because you're so worth it. Your kids are worth it. And if you don't have kids, your future kids, like if you don't want future kids, you period are worth it. Like you are worth it. I can't say that enough, but you know, and then being double and trip guys, fun fact, I went double diamond. This is not a joke. If Joe was down here, he could, he could say, yup, she ain't lying. I went double diamond with no cell phone service and no Wi-Fi. I had to sit at McDonald's every night for the, for the last like two weeks because when you don't have cell phone service and you don't have Wi-Fi, ain't shit going to work. Like it doesn't matter. You can't live off Wi-Fi at your house and you can't like, it doesn't, you're bro. You can't, you can't. So I had to go to McDonald's and I hate McDonald's. Kelsey, you know, I got OCD. I hated being at her. Y'all, she has the worst. Ooh. Oh, see, she's like, I've gotten so much better. I'm like, oh, I have- God, I can't imagine <laughs> that was you better. You're like, how? <laughs> okay. she's like, I'm working, it was like a barn wedding. And um, she was like, they don't have like porter potties. They have just porter potties. There's no like <laughs> real restroom. And I was like, bro, like, it's fine. She's like, no, but no. <laughs> And she was like wearing this, like, like when she has her makeup on, you guys, like, she just, I don't know, she just has it all done. I'm like, thank <laughs> you. Um, and she had this bomb lipstick on. I was like, so you wouldn't let me use your lipstick? She's like, nope. No. <laughs> no. If you, if you want to like, use it, you can have it. Yup. <laughs> yup. <laughs> and I do, I have OCD and that's a real thing. And I don't, you know, it's not something that I like. Let's talk about that forever. But I had to promote at McDonald's and that was so hard. The Clorox wipes were so real. (laughs) And I would sit there. I would sit there though, because I'm like, okay, I literally, I have to go there when Eric Eric and Lucy are in bed. Okay. So I would go there from like 8 p.m. to when they closed at like midnight. Um, Because my my McDonald's closed at midnight. And I promoted Double Diamond with no Wi-Fi and no cell phone. And so when people come to me and they're like, I just don't have time. I'm like... (laughs) Okay. Okay. That's fine. Like you have the, you have what it takes. You just have to know that you have to be willing to carve out that hour a day where you just sit down and work your business and be intentional and do income producing activities. So, um, I did, I promoted to double with no Wi-Fi and no cell phone service. I remember crying. I remember foods. I remember food stamps. Like, yep, that, that was my life. Like, it's okay. It's not, it's not anything to be ashamed of. It's who, it, I, I wanted more though. And so I went and got more. And now, you know, I had this he, talking to Kelsey. She was like, what do you need to go presidential? And I'm like that last diamond leg, like I just need that last diamond. And she's like, so start building that last diamond leg so that everybody. And I'm like, Oh, <laughs> so I told Courtney, my upline, I'm like, I'm that's it this month. I'm building like, I'm, I'm building a new diamond leg and I am going presidential. Like I never thought of that and put it in that way. And so having like, just, life happens. It's how you react to it. So I'm so excited to go presidential. My goal is December, um, but I know I can do it sooner. So like, you just have to be, you have to have your goals right in front of your face. And I used to laugh at dream boards. I used to literally like Courtney King is the queen of dream boards. And I'm like, you are so weird. Like I get it. You have dream boards. That's so cool. And it's so crazy how you grow and learn that those things are actually important. So now my dream board is very specific and I look at it every day and I cross things off and it's so exciting when you can be like, okay, I crossed that off. Even like we bought an $800 new bed. We needed it so bad. Like the mattress, you know, and, um, crossing that off, it felt good. Like those little things, maybe I didn't buy like a brand new crazy house, but we bought a brand new freaking bed that we needed so bad. And we've done other things. Yes. But being able to say yes to the things that I never, I would have never been able to say yes to is so big. So like know exactly what you want, why you want it. And, um, a couple things are like, I want to be debt free. I want to remodel the inside of my house. I want to go on a family vacation to Florida because my son talks about it all the time. Cause I go to Florida 
all the time. So he always says, oh, is that plane going to Florida? I want to go to Florida. So that's a huge dream of mine because it's a huge dream of his, even though I've gone and have been. Um, and then obviously this Disney thing, you guys, people can't believe they're like, Kim, you've never been to the most magical place. I'm like, no, try having nine kids as a single mom. No, we've never been to Disney. We've barely been anywhere. <laughs> we No, we have not even been to little like Chuck E. Cheese. Okay. It's hard. Life is a struggle. But so no, I've never been to Disney. And I'm like, dude, now my kids are the age where that would be actually kind of fun. And so that is, we've, oh, that's on my dream board. And now we get to potentially win that. That's huge. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much all. <laughs> okay. Last question. Okay. <laughs> um, what do you feel like the top three things it takes to be successful in this business is? Oh my gosh. Okay. Top three things. One. God, if you don't have him, I suggest going out and getting him. He's not on Amazon. He cannot be found on eBay, but he's right in your heart. So look him up, invite him in. Cause I feel like I cannot, I don't think I would be able to do anything in my life <laughs> without him. Like knowing what my life was before and what it is now, let me tell you, it's a lot easier when you've got him in it. So um, I encourage you to pray daily over your business, over your family, over your health, over everything first. So wake up and the first three steps you take should be thank you, God, when you get out of bed. Thank you, God. Be, just be thankful for everything that you've got. Give him the glory always. Um, I think that if you do that every single day, I know that if you do that every single day, you're going to be golden. Um, but also, too, is hmm, like work your business. My number two would be no matter what you have going on, like it's okay. And I learned this from Kelsey, too. Like, um, I did believe in this before, but now I even spoke to my accountability buddy and I'm like, now I'm taking it even more seriously. It's okay to have a rest day. Sunday is our rest day. It's family, it's church, it's doing what we need to do. Um, but every day, you know, the other days, I have a power hour or two or three every single day. Sit down and do income producing activities. If you if you haven't done the things you said you promised yourself, like the things you promised yourself, like post, message, follow up, grow your network, if you have not done those things in, in a day, sit down and do them. Even if you're so tired right before bed, just do them because um, it'll change your business. If you do it daily, consistently, oh my gosh, it'll blow you up. So post message, follow up, and grow your network daily. And grow your network can be a bunch of things. It can be blitzing. It can be adding new people to Facebook, following new people on Instagram, doing another party where six people come and you only knew one of them to begin with. Um, so that's two. And then three is, man... Power hour, give it to God. Hmm. Like just talk to, like run with your runners, like stay connected. I mean, if I had time to think about it, I probably have a better answer, but like stay in touch with your runners and know that if you've got even two or three or one, um, that's okay. Run with them. Like bring the energy and the excitement into your business every day, no matter what your team feels every bit of what you do and how you feel. And I promise you, if you need to complain to someone, which don't even, but if you really feel like you need to give yourself one minute and go do it to your upline, not in your team page, not to your downline, like give yourself one minute and then shut her down and be thankful for everything else going on in your life. But your team feels and hears and sees everything. And they will, they will literally, I mean, energy is everything. Energy is everything. So if I, if I'm irritated, which doesn't, again, I'm, I'm really positive. So, if, but if I'm irritated because like so-and-so and so-and-so and -so didn't show up on that zoom and it was really important or they're not doing the things I want them to, I have to remember that I'm 100% responsible for my business and that literally God could be praying them out as we speak. Like it's not up to me to want this for people. So just know that if you've got people that want this, just focus on them. Don't try to drag people. Think about it as running a race and you're like sprinting and you're just killing it and you're on fire and you might even get first place and you're like, this is amazing. And you want it so bad, but you have friends behind you, right. That want it too, but they kind of don't and they're kind of dragging. So you're trying to physically drag them to the finish line. Like that takes so much more hard work and effort that you're probably going to be in last place. Like just run with the people who are sprinting and getting there anyway. Like that is how you have to approach your team. And I've learned that the hard way. I used to complain about the people that weren't working as hard as me. And I'm like, and I had this moment like years ago where I'm like, who cares? I want it. I'm my own runner. Like I know that if I run and I bring that energy, I will attract people that want it and people on my team will just start doing it. So that's like my top three. 
Well, I love you and I can't thank you for you. just freaking hopping on and just sharing your wisdom with us because I know that I'm hyped and I would join your team if Yay. you're like, girl, them sneakers, I would fall for that every time. Yes. <laughs> I love you, dude. This was so fun. I know. Thank you so much for taking the time and we will chat okay. soon. Can't wait to see yes. you go press. Bye, girl.